Ah, uh, hiya, yeah, um, so I'm Floyd. Uh, this is uh, a grouchy old woman, why not? And uh, with apologies to the living end, that's called the ending is where it begins. First things first, I'm going to start at the end while there's still time, whatever that is. There is always a beginning, a middle, an end. My ending is beginning to bend around me. It happens when you lose your mother. Your boundaries become detached. Unlatched memories drift through space and time like matchless galaxies shifting, disturbing the fabric of your remembered life. Your beginning darkly matters more and more unless the middle of your life should contract and uh, into a white dwarf of total insignificance. You find yourself reflecting backwards into a hall of infinite mirrors wherein lies nothing. <laughs> no answers, no questions, no time to ask more questions. You cannot even conceive of what questions you might ask because she's not there to answer them especially not there to retrieve answers from the black hole into which disappeared all the questions she refused to answer while there was still time. So, let's get straight to the end, or at least how I would like it to be. <coughs> not alone. When the time comes, please don't let me die alone. If a tiny meteor plummets into a sunlit sky, invisibly indivisible in its brightness from all those particles of light competing for attention did it ever happen but then again why not alone what difference would it make there's nothing anyone can do there's nothing i can do at that point ah but that's the very point it's not about the end the instant when existence ceases when the body is released from the weight of present and consistent beingness. Oh, I got that right. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's more about the bit before, the, the moments of terrifying anticipation when you lie there spiraling towards the harsh reality of an insignificant crash landing, wondering, what the hell was that about? That's when you need another body in the room, banging on about dreadful politicians and how humanity is going to hell in a handbasket. So you get pissed off because you asked for it. You asked for life. You fought to grasp it long and lasting. And now you just want it, like your mother did, <coughs> to be all done and dusted. Which is pretty much how I feel most of the time, even though time, as such, does not exist. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not about to top myself. Or am I? <laughs> I am determined, as my mother was, to see the whole thing through. There was a time, back in the days when I believed in time, when I confused time with life itself, thinking it was a mountain, waiting patiently to be climbed and from whose peak I'd claim the world as mine, and I would shine my light across the valley to the other side, illuminating all the other nooks and crannies left in the dark by lesser mortals. And I would have done it too, if only I could have found a winch or a cable car to get me up there among the stars. None of that one step at a time nonsense. I jumped, I leapt, I bounced, I found myself back where I began, time after non-existent paradoxical time, until suddenly, without any apparent warning, I find myself here and now, on the other side of, of the living mountain, wondering how I got here. Why the mystical promise of the road left traveling, winding mysteriously out of sight, turned into the road to nowhere in particular? The road to later, and still later? And please, 
May I start again? Thank you. <laughs>